Hello everyone, Navy here, bringing you another video. Today we're going to be playing some more Mismatch, Book 1, Chapter 2, The Magic Spark. What was the first date, ha <laughs> what was the first date, has now turned into a life-changing opportunity. Will you be able to seize it, or will it slip through your fingers? Alright everyone, let's get started. Mismatch, Book 1, Chapter 2, The Magic Spark. You just found out that Veronica Hart, former CEO of Two Co's Matchmaking, is stepping down. And you're in the running to take her place as CEO. What the hell just happened? Miss Hart, what prompted this change? How do shareholders feel about such an unorthodox selection criteria? Wouldn't you like to know? Assistant C to press out, will you? I think they've been given enough to chew on tonight. Dang, Veronica. Brutal. Veronica waves the press off, and as a flock of assistants start herding them toward the exit, she turns to a room full of gobsmacked matchmakers. You all look surprised. Good. That'll make this even more fun. Your first challenge starts now. Holy crap, now? I was thinking like tomorrow or something. She motions across the ballroom where a bunch of people sit around tables, expressions, ranging from nervous to hopeful. Okay, okay, okay. These impressive singles are two Co's diamond elites. They joined us here tonight to find love and they need your help to do it. Matchmakers, your job is to help a diamond client find their match. Anyone whose client doesn't have a date by the end of the night is out. Wait, we're matchmaking right now? <laughs> I know, Callie. I'm trying to comprehend this as well. Did you think the competition for my beloved company would be easy? You have two hours. <laughs> two. Uh, luckily, we have three hours starting now. Immediately, the room breaks out into chaos. Matchmakers rush up to the clients, some of them taking out folders. Folders! <laughs> All of them clearly in their element. I have no idea what I've gotten myself into. Yeah, same. Understatement of the century. <laughs> Jack stands beside you, and there's a beat of awkwardness when you realize you're competitors now. Oh. Hey, Jack. Sorry about the whole you not being CEO thing. <laughs> so, game on? I do like a good competition. I guess our date's on hold until I'm CEO. <laughs> oh, dang, Callie. Confident, I like it. Oh, so you want to be CEO of the company that just hired you a few minutes ago? You don't waste time. <laughs> he laughs lightheartedly, but it's obviously forced. Okay, um, awkward. The smile slips off his face and he looks at you head on. I don't mean this as an insult, but you are not going to win this, Callie. Okay, that still hurts, Jack. The heck? Oh, remind me who helped you smooth over that day at the stockyard yesterday? This isn't the stockyard. It's a competition between professionals. You don't know the ropes, the process. You're in over your head. Sounds like you're worried about me. Someone's feeling the heat. You sure talk a lot of smack for a senior matchmaker. You shouldn't feel threatened by little me. We call smack, I call the cold hard truth. Ooh. Okay. Ouch, that's icy. And all that bravado to hide the fact that you've already chosen me as your biggest competition, isn't it? I like your fire, but it won't be enough to get you through tonight. Came on, Jack. Oh, and don't bother grabbing a snack because you'll be eating your words by the end of the night. With one more praising grin, Jack disappears into the crowd of math figures and clients. Your bravado starts to slip, and you jump as Veronica starts shouting at one of her matchmakers nearby. Dawson, never tell a client somebody's out of their league. I'm not waiting for the end of the night. You're out now. Holy Schmidt. I need a plan. <laughs> You duck into the bathroom and lean against the counter, staring at your harried reflection and taking deep, deep breaths. I'm only competing to run a multi-million dollar company that hired me two minutes ago. No big deal. Just your average day. <laughs> the bathroom door swings open again and a girl runs in in tears. 
this can't be happening. She grabs a handful of paper towels out of the dispenser and blows her nose loud and starts sobbing into her hands. Oh my. Hey, are you all right? No, that's why my matchmaker was trying to pair two people with opposing core values. Now she's going to tell Veronica to fire me. She said she didn't need her matchmaking decisions questioned by an assistant who can't even match her polka dots with her shoes. <laughs> um, honestly, it sounds like you're better off without her. That's rough. Um, that's rough. <laughs> Since when do matchmakers have to be fashion experts? I know, right? Deborah's harsh like that. I don't have time to keep up with the latest fashion mags. I'm married to my job. <laughs> that I don't even have- That I won't even have anymore. Maybe I'm not a good enough assistant, but the magical look in someone's eyes when they found love. I just want to help people find that. You grab another paper towel and hand it to her. She takes it gratefully and daps at her eyes and her nose. Actually, I could use your help if you're willing to give it. You explain your situation and the girl gasped. Veronica threw you into the competition just like that? At least you don't have anything to lose. Let's just say someone told me I wouldn't make it past the nice challenge, and I intend to prove them wrong. I'd be happy to help. I'm Maggie, by the way. I've memorized the files on all of our clients here tonight. Holy crap, Maggie. I like your style. All right, Maggie, welcome to Team Callie. <laughs> Be my assistant, and together, let's prove Jack and Deborah wrong. She squeals and pulls you into a hug before quickly stepping back and clapping her hands over her face. Sorry, I just got excited. It kind of happens a lot. I'll try to tone it down. You're good. Now let's get out of there. Now let's get out there and make a match. Sounds good. Okay, so we have Maggie on our team now. With Maggie cheering you on, you re-enter the party and spot a man off to the side, sipping a drink and looking tentative. Maggie, what can you tell me about that guy over there? He's a pretty normal guy, no red flags, super rich. He likes dogs, studying history, and gardening. Okay, let's see what I can do for that. You approach the man with a wide, professional smile, holding out your hand. Hi there, I'm Callie, a matchmaker with two coasts. How can I help you find love today? <laughs> Imagine saying that in real life. I'm not exactly sure. My name's Pete. I'm a retired banker. I'm sort of new to the dating game. I lost my life. <laughs> oh gosh. I sure hope not. I lost my wife, Dolores, a few years ago. Before she went, she told me I had three years to get back out there where she'd haunt me. Oh, my. <laughs> I only came tonight because today is my deadline. I didn't realize moving on would be this difficult. Pete, moving on doesn't have to be easy. How scary a ghost would your wife be? Pete, moving on doesn't have to be easy. You still love your wife. You don't have to be sure of anything right now. In fact, if you aren't ready, you shouldn't push yourself. Dolores said she knew I'd make getting back into the dating game intentionally difficult for myself. And are you? Probably. We had a fantastic marriage, but it may never have happened if I had, if I'd never gotten gotten over my nerves and asked her on a on our first date. His gaze flits to a far corner of the ballroom. You see his line of sight and see a single woman that looks very pretty. What's her name? Julia, we talked a little bit earlier. She loves cats and I'm honestly terrified of them, or I was, until she started showing me funny photos of her cat, Franklin. I can't remember the last time I laughed so hard. Aw, that's actually really sweet. You raise your eyebrows and he smiles sheepishly. I should go talk to her some more, shouldn't I? Yeah. Yes, and remember, she already likes you. It's your turn to share your interests. Slow and steady is just fine. I like the last one. Slow and steady is just fine. You've barely met Julia. Don't worry about the future. Just start with tonight. You're right. I'm enjoying getting to know her. That's what tonight's all about. Heck yeah, Pete. Go for it. With a grateful smile, Pete walks over to Julia, who lights up when she sees him approaching. Wow, you're a natural. You didn't even need to file. <laughs> they already have a connection. It's usually confidence that people need help with. 
Jack so owes me an apology. I know, right? Do I now? Oh, he's right there. You jump as Jack breezes up beside you. He nods toward where Pete and Julia are talking amatedly. Animatedly? I think that's how you say it. Looks like our clients are hitting it off. Oh! Wait, Julia is your client? Yep, you got lucky. Looks like we'll be working this one together. Us working together? Oh, come on. Knew you couldn't stay away from me. Honestly, Jack, knew you couldn't stay away from me. So what is it that keeps you coming back? My magnetic personality, my boundless self-confidence, the fact that you're my date, and our clients already, <laughs> and our clients had already met prior to us talking to them. That's a lot of words for destiny, <laughs> right? Jack crosses his arms, trying to, and failing to hold back a smile. Our clients have to leave tonight with a date plan if we want to make the next round before the competition. Eve shop with me. I love eavesdropping. The two of you weave through the tables, stopping just where you can catch a bit of Pete and Julia's conversation. I've just read a book about how women spies in World War II used knitting to send secret codes to the Allies. What's up with old people in World War II? I mean, World War II is like a great topic to read on, but like, dang, not all of you have to read on it. I heard about that book in <laughs> Cry Photography in the 1940s. What a coincidence. <laughs> Both in their 60s. Talking about World War II? They're a match made in Boomer Heaven. I know, right? It's a start, but we need a spark to get them hitting it off to falling in love. And I'm not some kind of amateur who leaves that to chance. Okay, Jack, we get it. You're a senior matchmaker. Woo. <laughs> Do you really think love is just some free, feeble thing that disappears without someone else interfering? Love's the end goal. The all enduring thing at the end of the tunnel. But we need some magic to ensure this connection lasts. Hmm, I guess. Jack plucks two flutes of champagne from a passing server and hands one to you, clinking your glasses together. Say your couple's on a date. You cut the power and suddenly you're giggling and looking for the candles and matches. They realize they've never shared a moment like this with anyone else. That's the kind of magic that makes love happen. Even if it's the same unique, special moment you've crafted for a hundred other couples. Sheesh! Okay. Wait. Did you pull that on me last night? You can't manufacture love. Okay. Um, I don't really care about the first option because... Irrelevant. You can't manufacture love, Jack. Especially not if you're giving hundreds of couples the same exact moment. Love should be unique. Special. Okay. Hundreds was an exaggeration. <laughs> okay. But if it w ain't broke, why fix it? If a scenario makes that magic for multiple couples, what's the problem? The problem is you can't just sprinkle fairy dust and make two people have a connection. <laughs> yeah. It's not fairy dust. It's this kindle it's a kindling and the flint you need to spark a relationship that can turn into love. I don't know. It sounds like you're trying too hard to create something that should happen naturally between people. It's called being a matchmaker. It's why we get hired. People need help finding love and we make it happen. Perhaps you two can put this to the test. You feel a nudge and look down to see Mackie slipping a little golden key into your hand. The rooftop here is so romantic, and someone just convinces the carry the guy to loan out the only key to the door. You are officially the best assistant ever. The three of us should set up the rooftop for Pete and Julia. Give them a romantic place to take a breather. There are some good scenarios we could set up there. Getting locked out of the party and having to snuggle up for warmth. No! No over the top scenarios! Just some time alone to make their own magic. They'll have their next seat planned in no time. Trust me. You're asking me to do things your way? <laughs> yes, Jack. Set up the rooftop to give your clients the perfect date your way. Jack and Veronica will be impressed with your matchmaking talent. All right, all right. Take over the romantic rooftop. Let's give our clients a night to remember. Or let's say here. Uh, yeah, let's do it. Why the frick not? Woohoo. All right, 
I'm handing you the reins. Just know that I'm preparing a backup plan in case yours doesn't work. Oh, ye little faith. Watch and learn, Jack. Yeah, Jack, watch and learn, boy Oh, Okay. <laughs> you lead Jack and Maggie onto the roof, and the skyline of the city seals your breath. Okay, this is perfect. It's breathtaking. The love the view. Jack, give me a hand with the fire. You and Jack get the fire going. The crackle and the warmth of the flames lends the scene of cozy ambiance, and you examine the roof carefully. If we're giving them the fantasy of sneaking onto the rooftop, let's make this roof glitzy and glamorous, homey and comfortable. I like homey and comfortable because it seems more genuine. Homey, who wants to first say where they feel like they're at home? <laughs> Not at home, but if we make everything too nice and perfect, they'll feel fake like they walk onto a set. I, that's practically what I just said. You grab a thick blanket from behind a bar and lay it over the back of the couch. Downstairs are on a time limit, but up here I want them to be able to forget about that and just focus on each other. Maggie pops her head up from where she's been rummaging through the ca bar cabinets. I found marshmallows! Maybe we can put together a s'mores kit? Love it. Jack, can you bring us some chocolate and graham crackers from downstairs? I'll play assistant this time, but don't get used to it. Sure, Jack, sure. The minutes fly by as the three of you get the roof in order. Maggie diligently makes sure everything's laid out perfectly for P and Julia. So Maggie, how long have you been working with Tuco's? About a year and a half now. I joined fresh out of college. Have all the senior matchmakers been treating you like Deborah has? No. If they were, I would have quit. The work here is really fulfilling and meaningful. I focus on that most days. Jack's always been really nice to me. When others get especially nasty, he sticks up for me. Okay, Jack. Okay, I see you. I see you. Jack winks at her as he arranges the cushions on the couch. What can I say? I'm a softie at heart. Aw. But we've never gone to work together before. Jack prefers to work without assistance. Flying solo, huh? Why is that? I'm just used to it. I know what I want from the get-go, when I know how to make it happen. Where other people hesitate, I act. Okay, there's nothing wrong with that. This way, no one gets in my way, and if I do ever let a client down, I have no one to blame but myself. Keeps things clear-cut. Hmm. I like that mindset, honestly. Jack, having a team is fun. That sounds like a lot of pressure. <laughs> Um, having a team is fun. You learn so much from other people, and if you're ever in a tight spot, you have an extra pair of hands to help. Having a team means managing other people. That means that when I should be focusing on my clients, I have to split my focus more ways. Not if your team's good. Mag and I have only been working together for half for half an hour, and I already know she's the best assistant there is. Okay, true. You elbow Maggie, who flushes. Oh, well, thanks. I'm just doing my job, though. I'll leave the teamwork to you two. You seem like you've got it covered. When the three of you finish setting up the rooftop, you set, you set back. You step back to admire your work. Looks good to me. So what next? What do you mean? <laughs> I'm a nice setup. Now what? Now we go get Pete and Julia. You keeping up, Jack? <laughs> You aren't going to get the building there to display a message and message and window lighting at exactly 10.51 p.m. where your dates sit down with champagne. That is an impressive level of micromanagement. I'll pass on that idea. Maggie, will you go bring a couple up? On it. As Maggie hurries off, you turn to Jack who leans against the railing. You weren't serious about the billboard and everything, were you? <laughs> I'll keep you guessing. Okay, Jack, uh, what? Jack, would you want all that crazy stuff on a date? What's the most over the top date you plan? Okay, Jack, I have to know, would you want all that crazy stuff on a date? Like, a customized message and window lighting? That's a dream, Callie. <laughs> That's a dream? <laughs> really? So if someone were to plan you something over the top, what's the best thing they could do for you? Hmm. He grins cheekily at you. With this someone 
be you by any chance? Maybe, maybe. Depends on if I like your answer or not. I think I like something fun. Funny. For them to show me they have a sense of humor. I've got it! Paying one of those airplanes to draw a dumb picture of me in the sky with his exhaust. That'd be great. <laughs> that sounds ridiculous. I love it. <laughs> I have no idea how seriously I should be taking you right now. Neither do I. <laughs> you sigh and join him out of the railing. The two of you look out at the kaleidoscope of skyscrapers for a moment. It's like it's very own light show, huh? Even after years of looking at it, the New York skyline never gets old. Always something new to see. Hey, this is why you go for these big magical moments for your clients. Gonna have to run that one by me again. You know, big unforgettable moments for couples who are looking for love in such a big unforgettable city. He frowns contemplative and looks back out the skyline. I don't know. Never really thought about it. The way I do my job is just the way I do my job. I guess I can see the appeal and all that skeptical spectacle, but honestly, something simple like this? You know, with a warm blanket ready to curl up in. At the s'mores, at the s'mores ingredients laid out around the fire, with a magnificent view beyond. To me, this is perfect. Nice and quiet. Tell me something, Callie. What's so great about those quiet moments? It's special because they let me focus on the person I'm with. You can make them your own. I like that one. If there isn't a whole big plan of how things should go, then you get to make those plans yourself. You and the person you're with. And even if you don't end up doing anything mind-blowing, even just watching a movie or trying to bake a new recipe... Trying! <laughs> You tell me it isn't at least a little romantic to end up with flour all over the kitchen floor as you swipe, as you wipe, swipe, frosting over each other's faces. Never tried. Might have to some, might have to sometime if I had someone to join me. There's just as much magic and simple stuff. Maybe even more. When you got me ice cream last night and we just sat and talked, that was perfect. I know, I liked that a lot. Yeah, it, seemed, it was great. It was pretty great. Eyes me and his cocky smile melts away for a moment, showing you a glimpse of something more genuine underneath. Both jump as the doors open. Oh, bad timing. Here they are! Maggie leads Pete and Julia onto the roof. They gasp at the sight. What a beautiful skyline of the city! This really is above and beyond. We thought you two might like some time somewhere private. We don't usually do this, but Callie insisted on your behalf. Thank you so much for everything. We'll leave you two to it. We'll leave you two to it. Yes. Let us know if you need anything. Y'all retreat behind a door where you can periodically check on a date through the glass. 30 minutes later, Wrapped up in the blanket, they feed each other s'mores, the s'mores they made, and Julia wipes some melted chocolate off the corner of Pete's mouth. They're so sweet together! As you watch, Pete's expression falls, and it looks like the two of them start a serious conversation. Oh, do you think he's telling her about Dolores? As you watch, Julia's hand touches Pete's knee. He smiles tentatively and puts an arm around her as she leans against him. Oh wow! Oh my gosh! Are you going to- Your whole body tenses with excitement as Pete and Julia hold each other in a close embrace and kiss! Awesome! Color me impress. I guess I really do have to eat my words. Yeah, Jack! You let out a laugh as you, Jack, and Maggie take seats at an empty table to wait for the night to end. And... How do they taste? A little bitter, I'm not gonna lie, but I'm not mad you proved me wrong. You know, we make a good team. You better get used to that bitterness. You know, okay, I will admit, Jack, we do make a pretty good team. Don't get too attached to me. <laughs> His gaze softens for a moment, for a second. Though it almost makes the whole I only work alone thing not feel worth it. <laughs> well. 
Duh! Veronica strides past your table, but stops suddenly at the sight of the three of you. Taking a break already? Don't tell me the competition's warning you out. Hey, you're looking at the two masked makers and one assistant whose clients are too busy lip-locking to need us anymore. Hmm, I don't expect any less of you, Jack, but Kelly. I slide to yours and a smile works its way across her face. Congratulations. I won't expect more out of you from here on out. I won't let you down. Uh, yeah. Face feels hot as Veronica strides away. Mackie shakes your arm excitedly. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. That was basically a great job from her. Oh, it's a double-edged sword. Now you've got Veronica's attention. You've got to keep proving you deserve it. On top of the world, your clients had a magical first date and you've won Veronica's approval. I think I can manage. Heck yeah, Callie. Let's do it. As Veronica calls the night to a close later, all the remaining matchmakers gather in the center of the ballroom. As the wrap that wraps up the night, congratulations to those who survived and thank you for all your hard work. I'll see you tomorrow. As Veronica walks off, Maggie lifts your hand and smacks a high five into it. Heck yeah, Maggie, we did it! <laughs> yes, we did it! I've got to catch a train, but I'll see you bright and early tomorrow to show you to the office. Get some sleep! You're about to join a crowd of people heading to the exit when you spot Jack and Veronica in a corner. You're about to approach when you hear... I saw to see you towards mine. It's bad enough I have to compete, but then you bring my date into this? Don't think I didn't notice she was the one who spearheaded the rooftop in the, in, in, I know how to say that word, initiative for your clients. She's made for this job. Believe me, I see how talented she is, but I've lived in this job for a decade. Doesn't that mean something? So he doesn't want me to compete? Oh? In a storm of emotions, you charge out of the building. Healing the first taxi you see. There's only one place you want to be. Where are we going? Oh, whiskey. Neat. And keep them coming. Is everything okay? <laughs> oh, I don't think so, Julian. You just throw yourself into a bar seat at your favorite restaurant. Your favorite waiter's on shift, but things are far from okay. Ugh, Julian, it's just been a long damn night. I'll take my usual Julian. <laughs> Jack! You spin around and see Jack at the door, your eyes lock, and your vision goes red. No, no, just no. <laughs> this is where I go to treat myself after a long day? What are you doing here? Great. First you dish me at the party, now you're taking my favorite spot? Well, I was here first and the door's behind you, bye. Excuse you, Julian likes me better anyway. Tell her Jules. <laughs> Jules, come on now. You've both been coming here for years, and I usually like you both just fine, but I'm starting to reconsider. <laughs> Julian is me. Julian places your whiskey on the counter, and a attorney in front of the next stool over. I suggest the two of you talk civilly about whatever's going on. Otherwise, I'll kick both of you out. You glower as Jack sits beside you, and he glowers right back. Who pissing your whiskey? Your whiskey. Jack, you owe me an apology. What the hell was that earlier? I wouldn't be surprised if you did. All things considered. <laughs> Look, what the hell was that? Like, I want to be more specific because a lot happened earlier. Okay, Jack. Um, the part where you threw me under the bus to Veronica? You heard that? It was really hurtful. Especially after we worked so well together. What the hell changed your mind? Nothing changed my mind. Your talent, really? I just have no idea what Veronica was thinking with this competition. Look, obviously this was a curveball for you, but it was for me too, and I'm not complaining about it. I'm not complaining. I don't understand what this opportunity means for me. Jack lets out a blustery sigh and takes a sip of his martini to calm himself. Would you like it if you were Pitt as a total newbie? As a veteran, will that make you feel like your boss takes you seriously? I guess not. But I deserve this chance too, even if I haven't dreamed about it as long as you. Oh, they both make very good points. 
You take another sip of whiskey, clearing your throat as it burns a bit on the way down. All right, fine. Pretend I'm not here. Let's sit in silence and have our drinks. Typical. Excuse me? What do you mean, typical? You haven't known me long enough to know what's typical. Even more typical. <laughs> what are you talking about? You're the type that likes to argue until you realize you might not win the argument. Then you try to shut it down until you get baited again. Not that hard to figure out, Callie. Yeah, well, you use jokes to deflect anything personal. Have a total superiority complex. Never told a significant other you love them. Ooh. Yeah, well, you have a total superiority complex. You're right. Wait, I am? Well, yeah. Whenever I'm not feeling superior to everyone around me, I come here and sob in a corner surrounded by dry martinis. Ah, oh, I see what's happening. Am I ever going to get a real answer out of you? A devious glint enters his eyes. Then he glances back at the rest of the empty restaurant. About half an hour from closing time. Want a real answer? Let's take this to a table. Have dinner with me. Do you usually ask the girls you were just fighting with out on impromptu dates? Just the ones I like. <laughs> he clicks his glass against yours and leans a little closer. I can give any two people the perfect date. Remember what I said earlier about the magic spark? What? You're going to make some grand gesture in the middle of a dinner? In the middle of dinner, and I'm supposed to fall head over heels for you? Scared of feeling a few butterflies? Or just not ready to see my superior matchmaking skills in action? Let Jack treat you to dinner to learn more about him and enjoy a special moment he planned just for you. Aw, let Jack buy you dinner? Okay, I'll bite. Haha, <laughs> get it? Or I should get home. Well, of course we're gonna bite. I'm not gonna pass up an opportunity to go on a date with the dashing jack you <laughs> lean toward him smirking softly all right i'm game but don't get cocky i'm going to walk out of here feeling no different than i already do go to the table give me five minutes and i'll be back oh i'm actually like excited now you take a table by the window and he joins you a few minutes later grinning smugly you raise your eyebrows <laughs> what did he need to do for five minutes Five minutes and you show up empty handed. Things aren't looking good for you, Jack. Pretty sure it only took three minutes. Okay, well, not the point. In that case, those are three minutes wasted. At least you know not to keep a lady waiting. Um, at least he knows not to keep a lady waiting. I'm nothing if not an attentive date. Hang on, I'm supposed to be the one, I'm supposed, I'm the one supposed to be passing judgment here. What? Don't I get a chance to rattle off my best qualities? You realize they're both leaning across the table toward each other, and you sit back just in time for Julian to set another whiskey in front of you, and a martini in front of Jack. Wait, hold on. There are three olives in here. Always get four, but then the night and we're out. This is all I can give you. Why are you trying to hurt me? <laughs> Why are you trying to hurt me? Oh, this is a mood. So, you're an olive lover. Honestly, the olives are the best part of martini. But I'd look like an idiot if I sat down at the bar and just asked for olives. <laughs> and that's one layer of my mystique peeled back. I'll make you work for the rest. Honest mood. What? Like a guessing game? Sure. You guess right? I'll take a drink of this martini I secretly don't even like. If you're wrong, you take a drink. Okay then, you are the older sibling. We're secretly a straight A student. We're a child prodigy and a niche musical instrument. Ah, uh, I ooh. Mm mm mm. Okay. Honestly, I feel like Jack has only child vibes, so not the first one. Secretly straight A student. Um, he is pretty ambitious. He seems self-disciplined. We're a childhood prodigy in a niche musical instrument. What instrument, though? I feel like it depends on what instrument it is. I want to go with the second one, but the third one seems too wild that it kind of has to be true. So, Jack erupts in laughter, unable to contain himself. What do you even define as a niche instrument? <laughs> I don't know. The theater mean? 
triangle or a breath seesaw? I don't even know what the first one is. Okay, now you're going- now you're trying to lose. I took a year playing lessons and quit, for the record. <laughs> now take a drink. Okay, I was close, okay? You reach across the table to swipe his martini and take a sip, making him splutter. I say a drink! And you say you didn't like martinis, so I'm giving you a hand. <laughs> take one of his olives for good measure and pop it into your mouth. You're vicious. I'm hungry. <laughs> Difference. And dinner is served. Julian places two plates on a table piled high with fragrant, with fragrant and steaming spaghetti. Yum, pasta. This is my favorite dish on the menu. Comfort food after a long day. Go on, take a bite. You twirl some spaghetti and take a bite, unable to help the quiet moan of appreciation as the savory flavors burst over your tongue. Ooh, the description on that. You spot Jack watching you, eyebrows raised. What are you doing? Gauging by how impressed you are. Based on your reactions, I say I'm doing pretty good. Don't take this too hard, Jack, but a play spaghetti isn't making me feel those magic sparks. You haven't stopped smiling in 10 minutes. I'm just still caught up on your olive obsession, wondering what the big surprise will be. Duh. And smiling about it, have some sappy fantasies going on in your head. I wouldn't say sappy. I figure you'll either make the sprinklers go off or you'll hide something in my dessert. <laughs> Look, Kelly, I like you, but I'm not ready to put a ring on it yet. <laughs> Do you enjoy your pasta for a few minutes? When he nudges your foot under the table, you roll your eyes and playfully kick his shin. There's a subtle smile on Jack's lips as he slides his eyes to the window and then his gaze turns pensive. Penny for your thoughts? Motions with his fork at a small dance studio show between a bodega and a dentist's office across the street. I spent most of my childhood going to classes there. It's a good place. Good teachers. You took dance lessons? What kind? Modern hip-hop ballet? No, no, and no. The lights dim and a soft tune filters through the speakers. Jack Sands holding out a hand. How about a demonstration? Oh, you take his hand, unable to bite back a soft laugh. As you rise from your seat, he places his free hand on your waist and you mirror the pose. You learn ballroom dancing? It's been a while, but I think I still have it in me. He starts to guide you, but you hold your ground and he gives you a questioning look. It's just... You assumed I let you lead. <laughs> I have two left feet. This is so cheesy. Um, you assumed I let you lead? That's just because... Because you're the one who took the fancy lessons. How do you know I didn't? Right. How presumptuous of me. Right. Show me what you got. <laughs> I call this the Kelly Sway. Jack laughs softly, genuine endearment in his gaze, as you start navigating the two of you in a simple sidestep. Uh, yeah. Let yourself get lost in a moment. The quiet simplicity of it. The music swirls around you and as the two of you step in sync. So, why dance? I just thought you could use one. Aw, uh-huh. Why? It's like I said last night. You're a bleeding heart. Always putting all your energy into other people. Never doing anything nice for yourself. I so didn't ask for that personal attack. I know, right, Cal? When's the last time you breathe? Like, really took a break and just let yourself relax? You got me. I don't even know. The last time you had a nice down, nice sit down dinner with someone. I'm assuming we aren't counting the microwave. I serve drinks for a living. I don't have time for fancy stuff. You don't have time or you don't make time? Care to tell me where all this psychoanalyzing is going? You said it's the ambiance and the quiet moments that matter between people. I figure you deserve to experience that kind of thing too. So drinks, dinner, and one of my magic moments that, all things considered, is pretty tame compared to what I usually give people. I figured a dance in the middle of a restaurant fit both our standards. A little flashy for me, but not too flashy for you. You really paid attention to everything I said earlier? 
I've been paying close attention to you from the moment I first met you, Callie. Holy schmidt, Jack. You're making my heart flutter. I can't help it, but you feel a I literally just said that. You feel a flutter in your chest that turns into a hot swirl of frustration as Jack smirks. Huh. That was a smirk. I saw it on your face. You felt it. Uh, okay. I'm literally going to step on his foot because the heck. You grind your heel into his toe, making him wince. And feel that pain, Jack. Let it sink in. Don't make moments if you're going to ruin them by opening your dumb mouth. <laughs> Noted for next time. Next time, you are 10 steps too ahead of yourself. You realize as waiters stack chairs on tables that the restaurant is closing and the two of you come to a slow stop. You sigh, remembering earlier, this was nice and all, but it doesn't change what you said to Veronica. I know. Consider this an apology too, if you can. His low voice is surprisingly sincere and you bite your lip looking away. Can I walk you home? Are you sure that's a good idea? No, but I want to find out. <laughs> Me? No. Like, can we just do it anyway? He leans in and murmurs in your ear, hands sliding around your back. Dance for two. You enjoyed a special night with Jack. Of course I did. A minute. You felt some butterflies. Uh, yeah, I did. You push him away and walk to the door, composing yourself before you turn around and cross your arms. I'm feeling like you can pay the bill. If I really want to consider that an apology. God, you're such a challenge. <laughs> God, you're such a tease, Jack. After he pays, the two of you start down the street toward your apartment. This is fun. I love it. Your arm is affectionately looped through Jack's as you laugh at a story he just told. So yeah, that's how I got out of the traffic stop for speeding on a bicycle. <laughs> what? I don't know how you managed to talk yourself out of literally every anything. Is that a skill or a defense mechanism? Both? I think I've, relieved. <laughs> I've revealed enough secrets for tonight. His smile fades and he clears his throat. About tonight, we gotta talk. This is the end for us. Whoa, 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 huh? You can't see each other outside of work anymore. Hold on a minute, is this because we're competitors now? It's more than that. Listen, tonight was fun, but I can't lose this competition. I've worked too hard to get distracted now. Okay, Jack, isn't that a bit extreme? Tension thickens between you. Jack crosses his arms as you uh, simmer and rage. Excuse me? How dare you call me a distraction when I helped you tonight? I agree, Callie. This is insane. That's not what I meant. You don't understand. You keep saying that, but then you won't explain what I'm not understanding. Fire flickers in his gaze, anger, and something else. Want to know what I'm thinking? About this? About you? I've been saying that literally all night. Things are finally catching up. God, you are so frustrating. You know that? I'll show you frustrating, you. And before you know it, whoa. Holy. Okay. Pleasure surges through you as you scream over Jack's naked body. He lays back on the bed beside you, gasping for breath. Oh my god. <laughs> Indeed, you lock eyes across the bed, admiring the way he looks in the moonlight, the smell of him on your sheets. Jack, we have to talk. Now. Actually talk. We can mad again, that was really hot. <laughs> no, 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 no. We have to talk now. Actually talk. Whatever you're not telling me, you need to spill. It's driving me crazy. I don't know. Running away from consequences has worked out pretty well for me in the past. I... I really should go. Okay, um, not before we talk. What? Oh, hell no. Oh, I agree, Cal. I agree. You throw a pillow at him as he climbs out of your bed. It bounces off his hip as he rolls around. Are you done? Because I am. <laughs> okay, get back here and explain what just happened. It was a mistake. A mistake? What the hell? You are the biggest jerk. Two Coast has a no dating policy. That's why we can't keep seeing each other. We could both lose our jobs. Dude, why didn't you just say so? <laughs> There's a deafening silence as Jack's words sinks in. 
and then you realize how ridiculous they are. You should have thought of that before you brought me to dinner. Oh, bought me dinner. I did. And then I just said, screw it, because I'm kind of an idiot sometimes. <laughs> I can tell, Jack. Look, I like you, Kelly, but we're going to stay away from each other as much as possible from now on. That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. This whole policy is downright stupid. I know. We could lose our jobs. So we're just supposed to not be turned on when we see each other? <laughs> oh, it's not that simple. Oh my. Oh my gosh, indeed. Oh God, Kelly. No, <laughs> are they doing it again? You're back in bed. Of course, again. Your whole body is still quivering with aftershocks of ecstasy. You struggle to shake them as you sit up. Okay, now we have to talk about this at a normal volume, like adults, without turning into rabbits. You get out of bed, pointing to the opposite side of the room. See him there and face the wall. <laughs> oh gosh. Ooh, I do like a woman who bosses me around. Jack? <laughs> Jack? Better get your butt over there. Jack sighs, hobbling out of the bed and across the room. Once he faces the wall, you turn around and do the same. Okay, Jack, are you attracted to me? Hard, yes. And we're going to see each other a lot at work, right? This is going to be so hard. He had a genuine shade in his voice and turned to look at him, only to realize he's been staring at you the whole time. Oh, gosh. He winks. Nice butt. Oh, my effing. I gave you one rule to follow. <laughs> you lob another pillow at him. He yelps and holds up and holds up his hands in surrender. Admit it. You're scared of how much you already feel for me? Trying to figure out how we can get away with this. You're scared of how much you already feel for me. I haven't had anyone make me feel as amazing as you have in it forever. I know I can't be alone here, and I think that scares you. Kelly, scared is the last thing I feel when I look at you. Alternatives include intrigue, frustrated, horny. <laughs> okay, if you don't start taking this seriously, I really can't lose this job, Kelly. It's all I have, and being CEO is everything I want. So then we'll have to figure out how to deal with our chemistry so it doesn't cost both of our jobs. Seems like as good as time to any to start. Jack picks up his clothes off the ground and starts to dress. You can only watch, feeling something heavy settle in your stomach. Once he's dressed, he approaches you, settling into an easy smile. You can't help noticing. You can't help noticing. Lacks a little heart. I'll see myself. Out. See out, we're Kelly. He just saves some a, a second and reaches out and brushes his knuckles along your jaw. We're turning abruptly and leaving your room. Aw, my Jack. Listen to his footsteps grow fainter until your front door opens and closes. Wow. That's crazy, guys. Imagine if you had to do that. I don't think I could. A few hours later, still way too early, you drag your feet to the front door as the doorbell rings incessantly. Who the hell? I know, right? Morning! I got your breakfast! Okay, Maggie, appreciate it, but dang, this early in the morning, you're that peppy? Maggie bounces inside as you open the door, setting a coffee and a croissant on a table and laying out a garment bag. How do you know where I live? I'm your assistant. I have to know that kind of stuff. And I have some bad news. The other matchmakers have all heard about Veronica's new hire by now, and they're not happy. Great. Just what I need. Grumpy co-workers who already don't like me. Don't worry, I planned ahead, picked up this outfit on the way over so you can make a good first impression on your competition. Wear the power suits to impress your rival matchmakers on your first day of work. Uh, yeah! Okay, and Callie actually rocks this look. I love it. Do I remember to look out to Coast Callie's here to say. We do a few model turns while Maggie gasps and claps enthusiastically. Oh my god, you look so good. Thanks, Maggie. Other matchmakers won't know what hit him. You and Mackie walk into the office a little while later. Mackie freezes as they approach the elevator. Oh no. 
Oh, Maggie, have you found someone else's heels in the back? And none other than Veronica's last minute charity hire. Cute. Let me guess. Horrible attitude. Arrogant sneer. You must be Deborah. Ooh, she's a bully, right? <laughs> she raises her eyebrows when you take in your new look. Hm. Makes you know how to trust so you can take the job seriously. Okay, I don't like her already. Before you can reply, she slips into the elevator and the doors slide shut. As you feel someone else steps up beside you. You look great. Don't let it distract you. You can't afford to lose, remember? Going up. Only for joining me. Thinking about shoving Deborah out the window, actually. <laughs> That'd be nice. She has that effect on people. Don't let it get to you. I'm just imagining the look on her face when I see the CEO position out from beneath her greedy little fingers. I like my competition confident. It just makes my win all the sweeter. Okay, Jack. Someone sounds a little arrogant. Next elevator over. Things open and the three of you step inside, the air thickening with tension. So, ready to lose? No, ready to win. Heck yeah, Kali, I like the confidence. Bring it on. The competition is heating up. Will you be able to hold your own against all the other professional matchmakers? Find out in the next chapter of Mismatch. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. I enjoyed this chapter of Mismatch so, 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 so much. And if you did too, go ahead and leave a like. And comment down below if you want um, more choices. I can do other series. Maybe suggest some down below. And go ahead and subscribe so you don't miss the next chapter of Mismatch or any other videos that I upload. Alright guys, see you guys later.